Hey, it's Zeke uh, Maniatnam, finding out what it's like to be rich. What we found out, what was going in there, is unbelievable. Why do you think the rich are so secret? Because they want to stay rich. They bring in a, a child and they set it afire. You know, they'll kill their neighbor for a can of green beans. Right. Go to Bohemia Grove, try to get in, see what they say. I really want to know the truth. Dear celestial being, which I may not believe in anymore, but I'm starting to believe in because things are getting so weird. Here, there's a body. What's going on in there? Who are these people? Can I ask you how much this costs? Yeah, I just paid 685. To give you an idea of price, 550,000. Jesus. I would love to hold Jesus. half a million dollars. I mean, are you guys rich? I mean, what do you define as rich? The price of this one is 849,500. Is there ever enough money? Here we go! <laughs> Are doomsday preppers right? The brink of a worldwide Mysterious fertility crisis. Mysterious have been appearing. Gun taxes could sinister. Could plague California. As clickbait headlines warp our view of the world, I'm spiraling down the rabbit hole looking for the truth. On this episode, Secrets of the Rich. It's one letter, but it spells out a bizarre conspiracy theory with President Trump at the center. This uh, person may have believed uh, and had some beliefs in is this idea of the reptilian theory or lizard theory. Maybe they think there are microchips in the vaccines that could be used to track people. That was a popular rumor. Conspiracy theories have been all over the news recently, many of which allude to a shadowy elite class. Sex cabals and microchips, the Illuminati and the dreaded lizard people, Wealthy people who meet in exclusive clubs making backroom deals that undermine democracy. After hours of searching through internet lore, I came across one of the most notorious of these secretive societies, the Bohemian Club, in their annual two-week retreat where the ultra-wealthy and powerful meet in a private event. In the year 2000, famed conspiracy theorist Alex Jones snuck into the Grove and secretly recorded the events on a hidden camera. I had to know what they saw, so we met up with this former producer, Mike Hansen, who also snuck in with him. What we found out, what was going in there, is unbelievable. This is how I can explain it to you. Okay. This is a death cult. This is not anything to play around with, folks. This is a 40-foot stone owl called Moloch. And these people that are doing the ceremony dress up in robes and hoods, and they bring in a, a child, and they set it afire. A real child they bring in? I don't know. Okay. If somebody told me about this, I would have said, you're crazy. Who are these people? Anybody of any significant is even movie stars. They control the media. They control 95% of the media. It's what you call the new world order. Right. They're setting up a new world order. You are the cattle out there. You know, you are the slaves. They want enough people to, to live on this earth just to be able to serve them. 10% would be enough for them where they can enjoy the earth and kill the rest of the cattle off and the rest of the 10% can serve them, serve them drinks or whatever. You try to get a story about Bohemia Grove out there, you're not gonna get it. But that's what's good about the internet. There's a lot of bad things about the internet, but what's good about the internet, they're being exposed. Mm -hmm. Mike pulled up his footage, which showed the club's annual cremation of care ceremony. How do you get to the, com I'm not, uh, hit, uh, let's see. Yeah, you can put it, go back to the yeah, YouTube. Go. I don't know how to use this. So. Okay, I got you. Okay, get to the internet. Yeah, go yeah. To the, this is a 40 foot stone owl called Moloch. And this symbolizes the devil. So you got people that are running your government and all your movie stars mostly. They are worshiping the devil and they are sacrificing a baby in effigy. What sane person does this? Would your family do this at, at, a, at a family outing? As it turns out, I might have had family who would do this. During the course of making this documentary, it came to light that a direct ancestor of mine was a prominent Bohemian Club member. I found his home recordings that showed what I think is a dress rehearsal of the same ceremony Alex Jones and Mike Hansen witnessed. This is never before seen footage of the Bohemian Grove. This like performance they put on is called the Cremation of Care, and this is what Alex Jones and Mike Hansen saw and recorded. And they, at one point, burned something. Here, there's a body. They're pulling a body out of here. I mean, a fake body, I think. I mean, look, there it goes. Boom. And then they light it on fire. 
Mike Hansen believed it was a baby that they were burning, but this one looked like a, an adult body, whatever it was. I don't think they're actually burning a body, but it's just kind of weird, right? Even the thought of burning a body, like why are you burning a body? What, what's the, you know, what does that symbolize? It's just kind of eerie, you know? You can see they've got some ping pong tables. That's kind of cool. But this makes me also think, I work in the media. I've got descendants to the Bohemian Club. Am I part of the New World Order? Am I an unknowing pawn in the New World Order? What can we do as like concerned citizens to okay. like- Okay, pray to God that, that the information comes out where everybody will have the knowledge to be able to do what it takes to uh, fight these people. You know, that's what I do. Dear celestial being, which I may not believe in anymore, but I'm starting to believe in because things are getting so weird. Give me the strength to travel to Bohemian Grove to expose the evildoers who are rearranging our world into some sort of new world order where we're all going to be enslaved because they're not interested in money, they're interested in souls. As a member of the media, I knew it was up to me to expose the shenanigans of the elite. So I flew to the West Coast to see if I could break into the Bohemian Grove. We want some answers. So we're gonna go get those answers. There's the gate, just begging for us to go in. What's going on in there? I want some answers. The signs outside warned against trespassing, but I thought I could fool them by peering down with a drone. All right, do you see anything in there? Um, What's that, do you think? That's, that's trees. That's a tree? But even from the air, all we could see were trees. Those clever rich people had thought of everything. Lots of trees here. That's it? It was clear that this mission needed to be accomplished from the ground. So I called my supervisor to see if they would allow me to infiltrate the premises. Sergio, Zeke, I'm, uh, I'm outside the Bohemian Grove. Man, um, I really want to trespass. No, that's fucking stupid. Dude, don't do that. Sergio, I don't think you understand the new world order that is that is being formulated here. Sergio, come on, let me trespass, man. All right, we got we got to figure out something else. Fuck! Fuck! As much as I wanted to trespass, I didn't want to lose my job. I had to find another source. But where? Who are these people? Thankfully, Mary Moore, an activist mentioned in Mike Hansen's book, I got all the experts in my book lived five miles down the road and had been collecting information on the Grove for almost four decades. So I decided to pay her a visit. Hi, Mary. How are you? I'm doing okay. Yeah? A little crazed at the moment. Okay, come on in. Okay. What a cool spot you have. Oh, thank you. In addition to being an activist, Mary is also a serious archivist, documenting everything from the happenings of the Grove uh, to, well, um, everything. Wow. This is the civil rights era room. This is just all of her binders. Actually, this is half of them. I'm no, just coronavirus no. alone. So she archives um, every single thing in the newspaper, but no she way. categorizes them. Um, so it's any article that she sees, anything she prints out, her email list. Um, and, and then she puts them all like by what is this? Volume four. Oh, I okay. got a coronavirus. I would get calls in those early days from people saying, is Alex Jones w working with you? And I, no, no, no. Alex Jones claims that they're burning real babies and that kind of thing. And so that was never our message. So twice a day um, up there for their two weeks, they'd have uh, lakeside talks. And these are major talks given by world figures, not just national. Those are talks that you and I have the right to be exposed to because they come from people that affect our lives. We have a right to know what they're saying. I don't care if they get up there and dance naked, you know, I mean, fine. It's the effect that they're having on the rest of us that is what we've been concerned with from the beginning. Why do you think the rich are so secret? Because they want to stay rich. It's all about staying rich and keeping power. Mary seemed to suggest that greed, rather than nefarious rituals, was the true motivating factor for the rich's secretive behavior. Although Mike Hansen was extremely convincing, The devil has little time left. To really test out this theory, I had to meet some rich people and gauge their motives. 
It's really amazing what you can find online these days between hashtags and digital flexes. I met up with a group in Miami who lived a life most of us dream about, but few get invited to see up close. It's cool how the gold just separates like that. There's one piece. There's one piece. It's 50 bucks. So I'm in like stocks, watches, and cars mm -hmm. are my main like three lines of like making money. Yeah, my parents came from money and whatnot, but I still do my own little venues and make money on my own. While Max came from money, his friend Nick was able to build his own hit Instagram brand, Banger Buddy. So like my family, like to give you some background, was like upper middle class. Like, you know, money was never an issue. Like I didn't have to go get a job when I was a teenager. Like my parents just like, you know, help me out or like I had my own side hustles. Like my parents let me drive their car so I didn't have to buy my own car. To get below the surface level formalities, I hung out with the guys for a few days to see what they were about. We're gonna go meet up with Nick and Max and they have um, a bunch of their friends coming through with really nice cars. Um, and they're gonna drive around their cars because um, that's what you do. You get together with your friends and you drive your cool cars around. Oh, we do this all the time. We do like little mini rallies. Yeah, we'll either go friends, hit Hard Rock right. or just hit lunch or whatever, meet at my buddy's yeah. place. We'll South do like Beach. South Beach to Hard yeah. Rock, Hard Rock to South Beach, whatever. Just in a procession kind of thing. Yeah, yeah we, we all, we all go, just like, roll through. Like, we'll all get pulled over too. Like, the cops yeah. will like pull us all over. Like, they just don't like us all like rolling yeah. in this big like stampede. I mean, a lot of people on Instagram like fake the flex, you know, mm -hmm. but like yeah. this is our daily lives. Like, we actually live it, you know, we're not renting Lambos in Miami and like here for the weekend. Like, we everyone take, assumes like, a, we are. Max not only owned a Lamborghini, he owned two. And so this is your car here? Yeah. This, uh, is, your, uh, this is your Lambo? That's uh, that's my white minivan, which yeah. uh, it's all, it's the same color. I don't know if you want to trade off, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Unlike the secretive nature I expected from the rich, these guys were pretty flashy with their money. I went with them to shop for watches that were anything but subtle. This watch with a rainbow bezel from the factory, $750,000. Really? In this case, the least expensive one is going to be the 29 actually. So right now around 170,000. And then over here, to give you an idea of price, 550,000. Can I hold that? Of course. Can I, I, I would love to hold half a million dollars. <laughs> Most people buy watches and they use it's a utility, right? It's yeah. like, I, you know, like, yeah, I, most people want to tell time, but like, right. People will like, be like, sinking that much money into a watch is so stupid. But a lot of the watches have gone up in value, like significantly. And now there's more demand and less supply. It's just gotten crazier. So I'm not like sitting back, like, ha uh, what's Billy Madison? I love to drink, but I'm not like sitting there just waiting for money to roll in. I'm like yeah. putting my money to work. Can I ask you how much this costs? Yeah, I just paid um, 685, but 600. these cars can go up to a million. Well, Max claims these luxury goods are investments. In actuality, it doesn't seem like that. What happened to the, we were driving yesterday in your Lambo. Yeah. What happened to your Lambo last Just a little uh, incident. Um, we saw some puddles that looked tempting, so I decided to try to like book it through them. And uh, I guess that didn't work out too well. Oh, are you worried about, you know, the whole thing of these is their investment resale yeah, value? Are you exactly. worried about the Carfax report after nah, this? I don't even know if like something like that would show up, but the Urus honestly, I'll probably never sell. Okay. Like, yeah, That's it's great. one of those cars that I'm gonna keep probably forever. So what about this one? Is this is this? I'm gonna an keep investment? this one forever too. I love this car. Oh my god. Unless yes. they come out with another crazier <laughs> SVJ in the future. Uh this one's a keeper for sure. Is it possible I can take it around the block? <laughs> there you Woo! go. Oh, holy <laughs> shit. All right, I'm gonna put this guy down yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the car's price tag compared to my salary freaked me out a little bit. So after a few blocks, I switched seats with Max so he could really crank it. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Part of it seems like it's a sport for you guys. You guys just yeah, like honestly, to make money. It's fun. I yeah. love going to the casino and making, yeah. like, we, last time I was at Atlantis, like last time we were in Atlantis, I was down a lot. I made it all back, and then I tipped so much on my way back. Like, I tipped like 1,000, 2,000 on my way back up to like breaking even. Yeah, it's awesome. I want to be able to be like, yo, I want to go buy this or buy this house or go on this yacht, like, cruise or whatever. Like, it's just nice to have that freedom. And yeah, that's literally what Max did. He booked a yacht. Uh, Probably like a big, like, I'd say like 80, 90, 100. Twelve. How much is that going for for the four hours? Uh, at least start around like seven k. Okay. As we set sail, I realized Mary was right. These guys just want to make more money. But what about power? I wondered if I'd missed something. 
So I decided to ask Max one more question. Any future yeah. in politics for you, you think? No, I don't think I'll ever do anything in politics because okay. I kind of hate that space. Okay. And I kind of just like making money and kind of like dodge the politics in a way. Ultimately, these guys didn't seem too concerned with anything besides, well, themselves. No new world order to be found here. Being rich seemed like a dream. You could get whatever you wanted, and access to money made it easy to make more money. Who gives a shit about world domination when you can just party and make more money? These guys make being rich seem so accessible. And then I thought, well, why can't I be rich? So let's go back to the top. <laughs> On this episode, how to get rich. Yeah, baby. That's the thing about this pandemic. It's been one of the greatest wealth transfers in history. There are now over 200,000 households worth 25 million or more. On the news, it seems like everyone's been making money during the pandemic except for me. Now that I knew that being rich wasn't evil, in fact, it's in vogue, I decided to figure out how I could get rich. And I looked at what I was told was a practical investment, real estate. Surely a small studio apartment in New York City would provide an affordable entry to becoming rich. Hello. Hey, oh my on. gosh. Come on in. Get out of hey, yeah. Hey, nice Andrew. to meet you, Zeke. You? Nice to meet you. All right, come on in. This is unit 3C. As you'll see, even though it's a little compact in this way, the space here lends it to have a very unusual and attractive layout. This is a built-in custom Murphy bed. All of a sudden, ta -da -da -da. Wow. Here we are. Cool. That's a nice looking bathroom. It's a pretty deep tub. You don't find tubs like that in New York yes. that are this deep. Having a soaker tub is definitely something that's critical in this day and age. Cool. So definitely a comfortable living room set up here. You can imagine yourself relaxing here and no question about it. This leads out to our balcony here, oh, which yeah. is fully covered. If you're talking studio, kitchen, home office, dining, living room, and a sleeping area at this square footage, because mind you, it is only 450 square feet, but there's maximum impact here. Cool. Now that I had seen the whole 450 square foot unit, I was prepared to look at my finances and see how much money this would put me back. The price of this one is 849,500. So in order to, the number wise for this, if I were to have 20, was it 20% is what you need to put down? So, so in this building, you are allowed to put 10% down, which okay. is another incentive, which is great. So you need, you need to have $85,000 about to. Exactly. Put down. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Well, the apartment had some nice features. Sure, yeah. Who can afford to purchase a studio apartment for almost a million dollars? I mean, this thing has a Murphy bed. Even for the smallest corner of the rich landscape, I needed $85,000 just to start. Okay, cool. My dream of being rich quickly faded and was replaced by a feeling of economic helplessness. As I spiraled out once again, I realized I wasn't alone. Across the political landscape, there's been an almost uniform rejection of the elite class in favor of populism. You know, when they talk about, they talk about the elite, the elite. Do you ever see the elite? They're not elite. You're the elite. Mike Bloomberg owns more wealth than the bottom 125 million Americans. The single biggest lie in, in, in politics is the lie that Republicans are the party of the rich. While this type of rhetoric is good for getting reelected, the power brokers of our governments don't seem to be in much of a hurry, despite the pleas from the struggling masses and the possible repercussions of economic civil unrest. But if the wheels of civilization really started to fall off, would the rich even notice? Maybe not because they may already be living underground. Okay, once more from the top, please. On this episode, how to protect yourself when the disenfranchised commoner revolts and comes for your money. Rising S Company makes a variety of shelters to help those who can afford it survive the end times. If you knew some of the people that I, sh that I sold shelters to, it'd make you scratch your head, go home, and try to figure out how you were gonna get a shelter. Gary showed me around the warehouse and allowed me to see a 1,500 square foot shelter that was currently in production. This shelter here I'm gonna show you is, uh, is one we're gonna be sending to uh, the upper Midwest. We've got bunk room, four bunks. Mm -hmm. And then if you look here, if you'll turn the camera around, I'll uh, open that latch. Oh, it's a secret latch, is that what it is? Yes. Okay, all right, so oh. just. Oh, whoa. Oh, wow. There's more. <laughs> Some people have walk-in closets. This guy has a walk-in gun safe. Cool. This part of the bunker is the last stand. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you had to come through that hidden door and close it behind you and, and put the latch on, this is where you want to take your last stand. This will be a surveillance room. Okay. He'll have 135 
uh, cameras around this property. Okay. And they'll all be monitored from within inside this room. Okay. Okay. How much would a unit like this for 1,500 square feet? Well, you're gonna remember there's a lot of there's a lot that's going into the electrical et cetera of it, but you're gonna be in the $600,000 range. $600,000 range. Okay, that's still cheaper than a one bedroom apartment in New York City. Yes. So, <laughs> so it's, I don't know, cheaper to live underground, I guess. It is. Uh, <laughs> well, if you're comparing it to New York City, definitely, and oh, it's quieter. Nice. Gary then took me into his office to show some 3D tours of high-end shelters that had already been completed. Let's go into this one. You'll notice the first thing it's going to do is show us a dollhouse view. Mm -hmm. This particular customer, they sent me a matte pencil drawing and said, will you build this? And I'm like, absolutely. See these hooks on the, on the ceiling here? Mm -hmm. It's going to hang a light here to put a pool table out here in the middle of this opening area. The pool table in, a pool in table. the shelter. Yep. Cool. That's sick. What's the most extravagant thing you guys have been asked to put in? The What's the most odd? Odd? That, sure, if you want to use odd. Horses underground. Horse, a horse stable underground. A horse stable underground. That is very cool. Down a bowling alley before. With, with ball retrieval and all. Okay, so it's sending you the ball back, you don't mm -hmm. have to go down again. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of that's a lot of mechanism. It's uh, just a bowling alley portion of it. We'll add around $175,000 to a project. Cool. Done swimming pools before. Cool, very cool. Uh, what's the most expensive one you guys have done? It's probably in the 14 to 15 million dollar range okay. when it was all said and done. Very cool. People get a shelter for a variety of reasons, right? But what would you say is the main reason? If civil you unrest. Civil Protection unrest. of civil unrest. Okay. What exactly does that mean, you know, civil unrest? Civil unrest be brought forth by a nuclear attack, an economic collapse. I mean, we're $29 trillion spiraling out of control. I mean, at some point, you know, checks are going to bounce. Mm -hmm. um, the food stamp cards are not going to work. Those people aren't going to sit there and watch their kids starve to death. You know, they'll kill their neighbor for a can of green beans. Right. You know, I just, I just don't understand what the, the game plan is. And, and we're never going to understand the game plan because we're not part of inside that, that you know, that pulls those, those strings and makes those rules. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Perhaps the Bohemian Club and all the other ghost stories about secret societies are missing the point. Rich people don't care about you, or a new world order, or even really the status quo. They really just want to make money. The inferred exclusivity of this group is actually a byproduct from a lifestyle where they couldn't possibly be bothered unless there's something for them to gain. Whether it's the grove gathering, or mindless materialism, or living underground with expensive horses, the rich have inadvertently chose to isolate themselves. And this could be problematic moving forward, because whether they like it or not, money is power. And when you have the power, you must exercise responsibility. Otherwise, at some point, those who don't have power may come for it. There's a composting toilet. I'll ask that you not use it. Okay. Alex looks like hell now. He used to look like a Greek god. Mm -hmm. But all this stress has got to him just like it's got to me. Mm -hmm. At least I'm not under the amount of stress Alex is. is. He is under uh, so much stress he has, like, got the world on his shoulders yeah. trying to save it. Mm -hmm. I don't. 